This is the vlogging test of Pixel 7 Pro versus the Sony ZV-1. The Sony ZV-1 is a proper camera. It has one inch sensor that is good for vlogging. And because Pixel 7 Pro has great video quality, it puts them in a category of a great vlogging camera alternative. So today we will check which is better, the Pixel 7 Pro or the Sony ZV-1 for vlogging. Hi everyone, this is JD, your gadget review friend. Welcome and welcome back to Gadget Rev Now. Some people are requesting to compare these two devices, how they will perform for vlogging, and how will they stack up with each other. This is another camera versus smartphone comparison. We will test the video quality, the audio quality, the low light, the image quality, and the range. Let's go to work. We are starting with the video test. Later, we will do the audio, the image quality, the low light, and the range test. So stay tuned. This is the video quality of the Sony ZV-1 using the XAVCS format, and we're using an external microphone. So right now, we are in a controlled environment, and we're using the external microphone. Later, we will do the audio test of the onboard microphone versus the external microphone. So in terms of pricing, this is less than 900 Canadian dollars, and this is lesser compared to the Pixel 7 Pro. This camera has one inch sensor bigger than the Pixel 7 Pro and it has a lens with 24 to 70 full frame equivalent. Sony ZV-1 has product showcase capability that is very handy for showcasing anything in front of you and the autofocus is pretty amazing. So for the bigger sensor, it has an autofocus area. You can see the background blur and it is natural. So this camera is a legit vlogging camera and I know a lot of people are just using this for content creation. Now we're switching to the Pixel 7 Pro. Again, the same distance. It is 4K at 30 FPS. I think it's MP4 file. And we're using an external microphone. In terms of field of view, this is what will you achieve uh, with the main sensor of the Google Pixel 7 Pro. Now I'll be switching to the ultra wide lens of Google Pixel 7 Pro. And this is the ultra wide lens of the Google Pixel 7 Pro. Again, 4K at 30 FPS. Pixel 7 Pro is a little bit more expensive than Sony ZV-1. Of course, it is also a phone, so you can do a lot of things on this phone, and I know people are buying this to become their vlogging camera as well. You can also do the cinematic blur, and this is the cinematic blur for the Pixel 7 Pro. Cinematic blur artificially blurs the background. It can only record full HD, and the blur is inconsistent. I think the natural background blur of Sony ZV-1 is pleasing than the Google Pixel 7 Pro, because sometimes the blur is inconsistent, and you can only shoot at full HD. On our next test, we're doing the audio test of these two devices. So this is the Sony ZV-1 using the onboard microphone. So if you're wondering what is the volume of the camera, we set the audio level to 28. Now we're switching to the external microphone. Now this is the audio quality of Sony ZV-1 using an external microphone. I'm using a lapel mic right now. You can also use a wireless microphone or a shotgun mic. But for this type of controlled environment, a talking head, a lapel will be good enough. So again, this is the Sony ZV-1 using an external microphone. Let's switch to the Google Pixel 7 Pro. So this is the audio that's coming from the Google Pixel 7 Pro. Same distance as Sony ZV-1 uh, using the onboard microphone and the speech enhancement is on. While we're testing the audio of the Google Pixel 7 Pro, I just want to remind you that we're testing this also with the Canon G7X Mark III next. So don't forget to subscribe. So that's the audio test of the Google Pixel 7 Pro's onboard microphone. Now we're switching to the external microphone. And this is the audio quality of Google Pixel 7 Pro using an external microphone. To achieve this sound or this audio, we need to use a dongle uh, that will be connected to the TRRS lapel mic. On this type of setup, you can still use a wireless microphone or a shotgun mic for your Google Pixel 7 Pro. And while doing this test, I cannot really comment on the audio quality. So leave your comment below, is this better on the Sony ZV-1 or the Google Pixel 7 Pro? This is the audio test of Sony ZV-1 outdoors. And this is the audio of Pixel 7 Pro outdoors. Let's talk about the image quality of these two devices. I love the HDR look of Pixel 7 Pro. I thought the shadows are exposed better, and it has a punchier and more vivid look. What I love about the Sony ZV-1 are the natural subject separation. I thought this is more natural looking, and there's no sharpening that sometimes make the image look cheap. I like the low light or night shot capability of Pixel 7 Pro and how it manages the highlights. So there are pros and cons when using these two devices when shooting pictures. We are now moving to the stabilization test and we're starting with the Sony ZV-1. For slower movement like this, I think the steady shot is pretty good for Sony ZV-1.
For Google Pixel 7 Pro, the stabilization is pretty impressive. It is so much better compared to Sony ZV-1. It has gyro EIS and OIS, which is a pretty good combination for any smartphone. Now we're testing the devices in faster movement, so we're checking the stabilization when running. The Sony ZV-1 has gyroscopic stabilization, and it's a little shaky but acceptable. While Pixel 7 Pro is built for this type of videos, we're using the standard stabilization only. It's a little punched in but super smooth. Now we're pitting the active mode of Pixel 7 Pro versus the steady shot of Sony ZV-1. And of course, the active mode of the Pixel 7 Pro will be so much better. Now we're comparing the reach of these two devices. The Sony Z1 is from 24mm to 70mm full frame equivalent. The aperture is changing from 1.8 to 2.8. Well, for Pixel 7 Pro, 125 degrees for the ultra wide. The main is 25mm, there's two times crop, and the telephoto reach is 77mm. The transition of the lenses are not that smooth. And lastly, the low light test. The Sony ZV-1 is more versatile because of the bigger 1 inch sensor. I set the aperture to f1.8, wide open. I set the shutter speed in ISO to auto. And even though the light changes from dark to bright condition and vice versa, the quality dipped down a bit but usable. The noise is very minimal. It's still good and will perform better than smartphones. Well, for Pixel 7 Pro, you know that the footage came from a smartphone. It is not good for low light production, but Pixel 7 Pro is doing better than iPhone 14 Pro. Because of the smaller sensor, it is noisier, darker, and honestly, just mediocre. You may need to use a light on these types of situation. You can still achieve good low light results on Pixel 7 Pro, but a little bit of work needed. So after testing these two devices, recommendations. I will choose Sony Z1 over Pixel 7 Pro if you're vlogging in a more controlled environment and low light, more of a talking head content and using it on a tripod. The video and audio quality of this camera is great, the background blur is natural, and the product showcase function is one of the best feature too. This camera will not disappoint. On the other hand, I will recommend Pixel 7 Pro over Sony Z1 on travels, adventures, and a more compact alternative. The video stabilization is impressive and can mimic cinematic blur on a proper camera, but needs a little bit of work from Google. If you want to travel lighter and it's waterproofing, Pixel 7 Pro is IP68 certified. The speech enhancement is also good. No need for external microphone for this setup. These two devices are great for vlogging. Pick the one that suits your need. And there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll continue to do the smartphone versus camera test in our channel, so stay tuned. And as always, Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.